What's old is new again. It's still old, but we can keep using it. Hey there, this episode of Some Gadget Guy is brought to you by viewers like you. All of the incredible people sharing content across social media and the generosity of my patrons at patreon.com slash some gadget guy. More info on those awesome nerds later in the video. This is my old Razer Blade 14. It's going on 10 years now. It was my main machine for writing and editing video on the go. One of the most well-traveled gadgets in our home. It's been all over the world in regular use during my time at Pocket Now, and it was only kind of replaced as I started doing more short edits on phones directly and later getting some tablets and then my new uh, Surface laptop and that finally retired this bad boy for good. So it sat on a shelf for a while and I just didn't think much of it until that Windows 10 deadline arrived. See, this machine is old. It has an Intel 6700Q 6th gen Core i7 laptop chip with a GTX 970M dedicated GPU. I kind of got burned on both models of that GPU. The 970 and 970M were not great. Not the best hardware from NVIDIA. But being that old, it's not going to get an official update to Windows 11. And while I can certainly find workarounds, it's really not that hard. I'm not really using this hardware. So it was a good test case for trying a replacement operating system. I was a little inspired by some of the other videos out recently, like Gamers Nexus going to cram in to see teams of people trying to recycle and refurbish PC hardware. And I recently sat down with some of the folks at US Perg for two different interviews, and they've been really critical of Microsoft's obsolescence move with Windows 11 and Windows 10 support. And on top of all that high-minded stuff, this experiment wasn't just a because I could project. Last year, my daughter got her first laptop for school, and I was really excited to see they issued Ubuntu machines for the kids. The teachers really didn't know what these laptops were all about and just kind of used them like the Chromebooks they were more familiar with. You open Chrome and you use Google Docs. It's pretty much the same. But kids like my daughter realized that everything they did in Google Apps, her teachers could see, but what she did locally on the laptop, like writing her short stories in LibreOffice, was virtually invisible to the teachers and faculty. So she started playing with Audacity and GIMP and Shotcut, and she genuinely likes Ubuntu. So this machine is 10 years old, but it's still significantly more powerful than the school laptops we're issuing to kids today. Right now we're in that phase, those little N100 chips. Are, they're nice, they're punchy, and single core performance is actually pretty close to the 6700 in this, but the blade is going to be more powerful in multi-core CPU situations, and even for a dog of a GPU, it's wildly more powerful than the GPU in her school laptop. Beyond just performance, everything else is a massive upgrade. The machine is built nicer, metal chassis, the 3K touch display, higher quality speakers, and higher quality headphone playback. It was one of the first Windows laptops with Thunderbolt 3. The keyboard and trackpad, so much nicer. And even for those of you that are starting to make fun of the bezels on a 10 year old laptop, this is still better than the bezels on a student machine. Honestly, the only substantial win for the computers issued by her school, it would be battery life. Even when this was brand, brand new, the battery on the blade, it was kind of garbage. But Lex is not allowed to use computers without supervision. So most of the time she's doing work or playing games, she's at the dining room table and will probably just be plugging this in anyway. I was a little concerned doing the install as I've had a lot more experience recently with Linux and AMD hardware. I turned in a little mini PC into a Steam OS box. I've got that video on Patreon right now. But I uh, busted out Rufus, created an Ubuntu installation drive, and I selected all the options to install extra drivers and media support. And I'm so pleased. This is one of the smoothest Linux installs I've ever done. Almost everything worked great. No keyboard or touchpad issues. The wireless card fired right up. IO ports were all functional. Audio works great. NVIDIA driver installed. Thunderbolt will send video out. So, I mean, she's not ready for this, but I can pair her up with some cinema glasses sometime if she wants. Ubuntu immediately fired that up as an external display. Even the touchscreen, nice and smooth. That was one of the big issues I had with my Steam OS box using an external touchscreen. I put this thing through the ringer and the only problem I can can find right now is the webcam is super glitchy, so no video calls with grandma for the time being until I can sort of sort that out. And I get to the end, it's just a fresh 
clean machine. No other bloat or Windows issues or pre-installed software from Razer. Unfortunately, I didn't think to do any serious testing while it was still on Windows 10 before installing Ubuntu. So you'll just kind of have to take my word on this, but performance is smoother than where I left it off with Windows 10. 16 gigs of RAM is starting to feel like a bottleneck in Windows land, but it's genuinely fine here. And that's also another big upgrade over the four gigs of RAM in her school laptop. I'm not pushing this as a gaming system for her. In our family, we, we like to make gaming a social activity. We're on the couch together, kind of playing the same game or watching people play the same game all on the TV with controllers. Her gaming needs are pretty light. We like to spend time on games like Shredder's Revenge or Sonic Team Racing. And this 10-year-old system handles games like that okay. Just looking at this hardware, if anything, switching to Ubuntu has been kind of a performance uplift as that seems to have less overhead than Windows 11. So I'm going through everything to clean this up and set it up and it, it just reminded me of all the good times I had with it. I like to imbue my gadgets with a lot of personality and they hold a lot of memories. How much I liked this hardware and I got really close like, psych, sorry daughter, I'm just going to keep it, like, but I have like three other laptops right now. So no, I am going to give it to her, but it really drove home to me how we try to grade quality. We tend to position computers for kids and seniors as just buy them disposable junk because they'll break the computers or they don't need all that processing power, but a well-built machine well cared for, we're 10 years later and the lower end consumer and student focused cheap machines are just now starting to catch some of this CPU performance. You could buy a new student laptop today that would be less powerful and not last nearly as long as what I got here. Granted, I kind of overbought when this was new. It was a bit of a silly expense for me at the time. It was very expensive, but balancing computer performance against consumer needs, we can maintain a reasonably high quality experience for longer than the 10 year blocks we think of for Windows support. Newer computers, newer systems, they're definitely going to be more powerful and they're also going to be more power efficient, but I'm glad I held on to this. I wasn't expecting to make it a machine for my daughter. Like that wasn't the plan I set out to do this, but I think she's gonna dig it. There are a lot of options out there and the Windows 10 end of life is jumpstarting conversations on what to do with older computers that still have plenty of life left in them. Some folks will be better served buying a new computer to get support from Microsoft again. Some folks can jump through the hoops for Windows 10 and paying for extended support, but this feels like a good time for other folks to explore alternatives. Maybe your PC or your laptop is fine and you can just keep using that hardware, the hardware you already own. The older I get and the more videos I produce, it's just becoming critical and it's just that last part of the conversation. I, I want us to love what we buy. I want us to get every penny of use out of every gadget that we own. I just want to keep stuff like this out of landfills for as long as we possibly can. This has been such a fun project and I'm personally stoked that this is actually the continuity play for my daughter. She was already more familiar with Ubuntu than she was Windows. So this, this made it easy. I know that's uncommon. That's not a story you hear very often. So I want to kick this over to you. Are you working on any PC builds or are you trying to refurbish some older hardware? Have you been playing around with new Linux distros? Have you gotten anyone in your circles of family or friends to consider a different operating system? Share some of those thoughts, you know, the pros and the cons in the comments down below. Super fun experiments. I love digging into this stuff a bit more like my Steam OS build, like some of the other little mini PCs I've been playing with, my laptop reviews. The folks who get to see the results of my reviewing and testing first are my awesome patrons. All of the folks over at patreon.com slash some gadget guy. This list of names scrolling by on your screen right now, a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart is they're helping to keep the lights on here in the gadget lab and they're the coolest tech pals in the universe they get exclusive access to my 4k videos they get early access production diaries behind the scenes some of my write-ups and editorials before they publish live on some i hope you'll check them out i hope you'll consider joining the community at patreon.com slash some gadget guy now you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet probably for the next couple days on a new Ubuntu machine. <laughs> Nothing that matters when you're checking me out on the Mastodons. I'm not spending as much time on the blue skis, but I'm still over there. And a lot less so on the Facebooks, threads, Instagrams, and none at all on that dumpster fire site. And I will catch you all on the next video.